On this episode of Ask a Photographer, what if I don't like my photos? Most people feel like they're not photogenic. You might be one of them, but that's why professional photographers exist. So you can have great photos that you're excited to share. One of my favorite things about being a photographer is when a client comes in for their reveal and she always says something like, oh man, I hope we just got at least, you know, a few good ones that I can have. And then she picks out her favorite 50 and is just blown away by how many great photos there are. And then the realization comes that it was never about her. She just wasn't photographed properly in the past and it taints the way that we feel about ourselves in photos. And since most people feel like they are not photogenic, here are the four most likely experiences you are gonna have with a photographer. Number one, you went into it thinking you were only gonna like a few and you ended up liking most of them. Number two, you communicated your concerns with your photographer and they ended up doing a shoot where you loved all of the photos. Number three, you didn't like the photos because of unrealistic expectations. And number four, you didn't like the photos because you didn't have the right photographer. Before we dive in, I just wanna say, I don't mean to say that it's your fault or somebody else's fault. I'm not placing blame, no one is the bad guy here. I'm giving you these tools so that you can make the right decisions and come out with a positive experience. That's what this is. I'm not saying you're not good at picking photographers, you might just not know how to, because if you aren't a professional, then you don't know what to look for, but that's why you're here. So I'm so stoked that you're here for this video, my goal is to give you the tools you need to make sure you love all of the photos at your photo shoot. Okay, number one, you thought you'd only like a few, but you ended up liking most of them. This is generally what happens. I get on my consultation calls and I ask my clients, how do you wanna see yourself? Tell me about the woman you wanna see in these pictures. What is she like? What story are we telling? What are some things that you love about yourself, physically and emotionally? I wanna know your favorite things that we can bring out during this photo shoot. What are some things that you'd love to see in yourself, but you just don't? Those are the things that I'm gonna focus on. But if you've never done a photo shoot before, or you've never really analyzed this process, you wouldn't know to ask. And again, it's not your fault. You just haven't done the thing before. So now you know. When I ask all these questions, I know that I'm setting my client up for success. Also, I'm really darn good at posing my clients and I'm pretty darn good at lighting as well. So I know I can put my clients in flattering positions. And again, they usually come in thinking, well, that was a ton of fun, but I hope we got at least a couple I like. And then they end up liking most of them. I usually show 75 to 100 photos during a given photo shoot. And after we do our calling of separating the ones we're feeling from the ones we're not during the reveal process, most of my clients usually drop about a third of the images. So we still end up with, you know, 50, 60 photos that they loved, hoping they were only going to get two or three. Number two, you have communicated your concerns with your photographer who also knew the right questions to ask and you ended up loving all of the photos. This is magic. This is what we want to aim for. When you found the right photographer who knows the right questions to ask and you know how to communicate those concerns to your photographer and you can be open and vulnerable and know that this is not a place of judgment, we want to know who you are so that we can bring out all of that magic in the photos. That is the sweet spot we're aiming for. That is the Grand Slam, that is the Super Bowl winning touchdown, that is the final ace to win Wimbledon, that is where the magic happens right there. So take some time to think about this before you reach out to a photographer. What do you want to get out of the experience? And, and it's not photos. How do you want to feel about yourself, about the images? What do you really want out of this experience? Because if you don't know, it's going to be a lot harder to find it. But if you think about it, then we can create the experience to help you achieve that. And then of course, we are gonna set you up with posing guidance, with good lighting, but also wardrobe guidance to make sure you have things that fit you well and that are flattering in photographs. Also providing hair and makeup to bring out your best features. All of these things combine to an amazing photo shoot experience where you have a great time and love all the photos. The way I like to do this is frame it as the photos being the souvenir from the experience. So you come in, you're getting treated to hair and makeup, a glass of Prosecco if you want it. Uh, we put your favorite music on. We're just having fun hanging out, doing the actual photo shoot. You're gonna play, dress up in these outfits that you've always wanted to wear and feel good in, and it's just magic. And then you see the back of the camera, how beautiful you look in the photos, and walk out of here feeling like a rock star. It is amazing. Then you come back in, hoping to like a few photos, like all of them, and then have these gorgeous keepsake albums to bring home, wall art that you're stoked to have up on the wall. The photos are the souvenir from all of that magic. 
So again, knowing what you want to get out of this will allow us to create that. Number three, you don't like the photos because of unrealistic expectations. And this could be a couple different things. One is with the photographer. So I do all of my photos, this dark, moody, dramatic style. If somebody comes in and says, that's super cool, but can we do some light and airy ones? Can we do uh, these other kind of style that I found on Pinterest? I'm like, well, I don't really do that. So you know, this is what you would sign up for. This is what we're going to do. Setting those kind of expectations early on, super important to choose the right photographer and to make sure you're in a place where those things can actually happen. Also, when we look at photos on Pinterest, I mean, I'm pretty good at this because I teach it and I've been doing this a long time. I can usually tell what kind of lens they're using, what kind of lighting equipment they're using. I can break down how the image was taken, but if I don't see those photos ahead of time, I can't look at them and say, well, this isn't even possible because I don't have that lighting gear. I don't have a lens like that. We don't have a space like this. I don't have furniture like that. So I can create things that convey the same mood, but I can't recreate those images. And as an artist, I don't want to recreate somebody else's work. At that point, I'm a cover band. I'm not a headlining act. And I didn't get into this to copy other people's work. So just setting those expectations, super important, but also expectations with yourself. And this is probably the toughest one. You know, body dysmorphia is very real. I've had clients in the past who just cannot look at their own body without a feeling of disgust. And it's heartbreaking. And I, and I do my best to create a great environment and we show gorgeous photos. I can't change how you process that information. I can just show you a different way to see yourself. And if you're a size 10 and you want to look like a size two in photos, that's just not going to happen because by the time we Photoshop and manipulate everything in the image to, to physically change your body structure, you're not you anymore. And the whole idea of this is to celebrate you and the beauty and just the radiance, the, the magic that is already inside of you, right? Like the Wizard of Oz. It's already there. I'm just going to show you it was there the whole time. So understanding that is key to this being a positive experience. So let's go on to number four, and it's being disappointed in the photos because you didn't pick the right photographer. This, again, it's a communications thing. If you don't know what you don't know, it's really tough to do this. I've got other great videos on this channel about how to pick the right photographer, whether it's based on style or budget or location or genre or whatever. Killer videos on this channel all about that. But right now, I will say to choose the right photographer, there are two main things that you want to look for. One, can you see yourself in the photos? This isn't, do you like their style? Do you think they're a good photographer? That's different. Can you see yourself in the photos? Because you might look at some photographer and say, wow, this person's really good. I wonder if they can do this kind of other thing for me. Again, that's, that's asking a Mexican restaurant to make you a lasagna instead of just ordering you know, the burrito because you're at a Mexican restaurant. If you want Mexican food, go to the Mexican restaurant. If you want Italian, go to the Italian restaurant. Same thing with photographers. If you love the dark and moody style that I shoot, amazing, I would love to photograph you. If you want something bright and airy, that's not my jam. I don't want to do it. I'm not good at it, uh, I don't enjoy it. So I'm not gonna be the right person. So rather than showing up, looking at the photos and being like, well, I just really hoped we'd get something kind of like this, like, well, Literally every photo I take is dark and moody, so I don't know why that expectation was there. Like, this is all that I create. So again, it's asking those questions, it's being clear with your intentions and making sure that photographer does a style that really resonates with you. And if you can look at the photos and imagine yourself in those poses, in those scenes, as the person in those images, then you're off to a really good start. All right, so part 4.5, uh, the second half of this one, is it's not just about budget. It's about what do you get versus what do you pay. Some photographers do not include hair and makeup. Some don't know how to pose you. Some give you all the images on a thumb drive or a Google Drive and just send you on your way. If you just want to be in front of somebody's camera and have some photos, then that's perfect. But if you want a more inclusive luxury experience, having your hair and makeup done, maybe a client closet where they have 30 different dresses that you can wear and gowns and crowns and all kinds of fun outfits to play in, plus posing guidance and preparation assistance, professional editing, and then gorgeous albums to take your, your photos home in and beautiful art to hang up on the walls. That's an entirely different thing. So understanding what does this photographer deliver, what is included in the experience, and then how much do they charge for that? It, it goes way beyond just budget. It's what are you getting for what are you paying? So I hope this cleared up all of that and help you set some better expectations because there's only four outcomes you can have when you hire a photographer. You're either gonna love some of the photos because they did a really good job and you weren't sure what to expect. 
Or you both communicated thoroughly. You knew what you wanted. They knew what they could deliver and how to get it out of you. And you loved all the photos. You didn't like the photos because of unrealistic expectations, either of the photographer or yourself. And four, you didn't like the photos because you just picked the wrong photographer who didn't deliver the things that you wanted. So I hope that cleared up a lot of confusion for you and made this seem like an easier process. I hope I didn't get too uh, moody or dramatic or make this seem like it's a really tough thing. It's not, right? It's like, again, choosing a restaurant. Once you have an idea of what you're in the mood for, you go to that thing and then you're going to leave happy. But if I don't like Thai food, probably not going to go to a Thai restaurant. I love Thai food, by the way. And I, again, I have other great videos on this channel about how to pick a photographer in your area, how to find the right fit for you, and how to prepare for your photo shoot to make it the best possible experience. And again, if you'd love to work with me, I would be honored to photograph you. You can find me at MikeLloydStudios.com. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.